Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. Today we're looking at the MSI GS65. This is their latest thin and light gaming laptop. It's running the new six core CPU from Intel with the GTX 1070 Max-Q. It's a completely decked out thin and light laptop that just, it's awesome, as you could tell by the title. Um, it's been redesigned this year, completely redesigned. The previous generation and the one before that all shared the same chassis. They just kind of switched the internals. Brand new everything this year. The build quality on this new design is good. It feels slightly better than the GS63 to me. It has no red on it at all. I think this is the very first gaming laptop from MSI that wasn't black and red. It's got this black and gold theme going on, very subtle. It actually looks really good. You can bring it to work or a coffee shop and no one would think anything of it. It's super stealth. It honestly looks like a premium black and gold laptop. Now, in case you're wondering, the logo up here is completely flush to the surface. If you're inclined and wanted to mask this logo out, you could probably get a skin for it and it would look even more murdered out. The hand hinge is on each side, so it doesn't run along the whole length, but it actually feels really well built. And this kind of hinge aesthetic is just not something we've seen from MSI before. I really like it. Inside we have the power button in the middle of the laptop, and there was talk about how there was going to be a fingerprint sensor. This engineering sample does not have a functioning one, but it might in the future. The build quality of this whole thing is good, very good. It's not perfect, like this isn't a unibody build or anything like that. It's like not milled from a single piece of aluminum. It's using paneling, but it's pretty good. There are some panels with a little bit of flex from the perforations, but it is a well-built laptop. Okay, before going any deeper into this video, I feel like I should bring something up with you guys. I really like this device. It's a great laptop and there are some issues with it, but I had to dig pretty deep to find them. And I think a lot of you guys might think that I'm just like nitpicking and I really am. I, I feel like that's what you have to do when it comes comes to products that are really well built and just good, you just got to dig deeper than normal to find something that you can kind of use as a reason that some people may not like it, but you'll see. Okay, let's go with the keyboard first. I feel like that's like a good place to start. It's pretty much your standard MSI keyboard. It's steel series backlit, but the keys have this layout that takes a little bit of time to get used to. Once you do, you'll be comfortable on it. The trackpad is, well, technically it's a Windows Precision trackpad. It's running Windows Precision touchpad, but it's using Synaptic software underneath. It feels good, it's just not perfect. Gestures are on point, but there's something with the tracking that feels off to me. It's like the acceleration is just a little bit too fast. Um, I can't really describe in words. It's just, it doesn't feel like your standard Windows Precision software to me. It's good, just not perfect. The button mechanism is a little stiff, but it's tactile, and I like the feel of the trackpad overall. One of the first things that I didn't like about this laptop is the accessibility. So MSI's thin and light laptops are never really easy to get into. Like I've never had a lot of problems, but they're just not, you know, one screw and remove it. It's always a little bit of work. This one is very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I couldn't get in there and I've opened quite a few laptops. See, this isn't even my unit. It's like an engineering sample and I'm already a little bit more aggressive than I would be if I'd purchased this with my own money, but I just can't seem to get in here easily. The other thing is that the drive in here is a little bit slow and it's okay when companies put in slow drives because like it keeps the cost down and you can upgrade it. But in this case, it's pretty difficult. I'm sure you can get in there. It's just not an easy thing. The display is excellent. I really like it. It's bright, it's fast, it's 144 hertz, excellent color gamut. There's nothing I really have to complain about it. The top bezels are thin, the side bezels are really thin. There is a bit of a chin, but I mean, if you're gonna put a thick bezel somewhere, the bottom one's probably the best. Webcams up top, image quality isn't amazing, but at least the angle is good. And it's just really nice to see laptop companies put in faster screens because last year we were seeing really high-end laptops with something like GTX 1080s in them, but they're capped with 60 hertz screens, which just didn't make sense to me. This is the way to do it. Fast screens with fast processors, fast GPUs, good stuff all around. One thing to note though, this display does not have G-Sync. And I think for some people, they're just like, hey, deal breaker, no G-Sync. But the truth is, I actually like that it doesn't have it. Here's why, number one, it keeps the price down. If they had a display that was licensed for G-Sync, this would be like an extra 100 or 200 bucks. The other thing is battery life. By not having G-Sync, you get to use Nvidia Optimus, so you can use the onboard graphics to keep your battery consumption down when you're just not playing games and stuff. But the main reason for me is that G-Sync is only really useful at like, 60 frames per second or slower. The moment you bust like 60, 70, 80 frames per second, it just doesn't, it's not as useful. I'm not saying it's not useful, it's just not as useful as it would be when you're at lower frame rates. At 144 hertz, this thing can shoot way beyond the frame rates where G-Sync is clutch. Now in terms of connectivity, the port selection is quite good. There's nothing I feel like this thing's missing. It even has an ethernet port. 
If there was one thing I would add, it would be like an extra Thunderbolt 3 or USB-C port, but that's basically it. Now, I don't love the location of the AC adapter hole. It's just kind of in the middle of the side here, and I think some people won't care, but it just doesn't look as clean to me when it comes out the middle, and the cable can kind of cover the exhaust in some circumstances. It's a minor issue, but I thought I'd put it out there. The speakers are located on the bottom, and... I wish they weren't located on the bottom because they actually sound okay. They get really loud. It's just the location is really poor. When you have these things playing in a normal position, the audio gets really flattened out by the table or the desk or whatever you have your laptop sitting on. It just loses so much clarity because of its position that I just wish it was positioned elsewhere. The battery inside here has been significantly upgraded from the previous generation. It's now 82 watt hours. It's a six hour battery for regular use with the screen at 250 nits. The AC adapter is 180 watts, nothing special, kind of like your standard MSI adapter. The performance on this laptop is straight up excellent. It's the six core i7-8750H, and you're gonna see great performance numbers. If you want more details on this particular CPU, you can check out the video that I'll link below, but for multi-core applications, it's a big step up from the last gen. The GPU is awesome, 1070 Max-Q, really good performance for basically any kind of game at 1080p, and you'll be able to take advantage of that 144 hertz screen. It's a really good combination. The fans can be controlled in Dragon Center, like you can crank up the fans if you're doing like a 3D render or if you want like the best gaming performance possible, you can crank it up, it'll be loud, but you'll get great performance or you can just leave it on auto and just let it do its thing. On idle, it's silent and on load, it gets a little bit louder, but you get great performance. You can slow it down manually if you want, but on a thin and light laptop like this with a six core processor and a 1070 max Q, you kind of want to let the fans do its thing and I think they do a really good job with the thermals. The exterior temperature is also pretty good on the top surface, it gets a little warm on the bottom though. I'd play games on a table or a desk and not so much on your lap. So overall, I feel like MSI did a really good job on this device. There's so much about this thing that I feel like people will appreciate. There's so much they did right about this thing. Um, the only real complaint I have about it is seriously the accessibility. That's something I really wish they just, I don't know why they made it so difficult to get in there, but it is. The pricing at $1,800 on the base model is fair. It's not great, this is never gonna be cheap. A six core desktop replacement is never gonna be cheap right now, but it's reasonably priced. I feel like there's gonna be way more expensive models that do something similar to this. As for whether or not you should upgrade, if you're running a 7700HQ and all you do is play games, then probably not, but if you do anything that can take advantage of the multi-core stuff, like the six core CPU, this is a good one. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.